Hello everyone, I'm Sven Ronning. I'm Artistic Director of Second City Chamber Series in Tacoma, Washington. Welcome you back to some online music and conversations with some of the many interesting people that we feature as Second City Chamber Series artists. In this installment, I'm speaking with a dear friend of mine who is a distinguished violinist, but who has not yet appeared on the series. It's not because we wouldn't like to have him, but because David Marco lives in Madrid in Spain and circumstances haven't yet brought him to perform on our shores. David's also a gifted graphic designer in addition to being a fine violinist. And when I recently had a concert tour of Spain, we had occasion to visit in the cafes of Madrid and hatch the plot. But before I get into all of that, welcome David. Hello, how are you? Great to have you here. Thank First you. of all, David, when we met, it was nearly 25 years ago in Greensboro, North Carolina, and we were both faculty members at the Eastern Music Festival there. Maybe as a backstory, you could tell us how you came to study the violin and how it brought you to the United States for a time and, and what you're doing as a violinist today. Okay, so I started uh, to, play, to play violin as something almost inevitable because I grew up in a village uh, called Montserrat, which is uh, very close to Valencia City. And in my land, there's a, a long history and long tradition with music education. So, for instance, here in my village, there's a big brass band and uh, string chamber orchestra. So, uh, and in any family, there's always some professional musician and uh, many people play some instrument. So it was absolutely natural. And as I said, almost inevitable for me to, to start to, to play some instrument. And I started to play violin because I offered to my mother four options, uh, flute, uh, piano, uh, guitar and violin and she decided uh, violin, so here, here I am. And uh, I went to the States first in 1991 uh, with Young National Orchestra of Spain to play in New York City at Carnegie Hall. It was a wonderful concert. And then we went back uh, some months later to play in Lincoln Center to record a TV show for the Spanish Broadcast Cor Corporation. And then I first went to Eastern Music Festival just before knowing each other uh, in the summer of 92, uh, because at that time I was concert master of the Young National Orchestra of Spain and Sheldon Morgenstern, the founder and director of EMF, uh, came to Spain to conduct our orchestra. And at that time, a very good friend of us, Barbara Hamilton, that you know her very well. She's mm -hmm. a wonderful viola player and teacher, and now she lives in Denver, Colorado. She was a uh, faculty in both places, in Easter Music Festival and in Young National Orchestra of Spain. So somehow it was very natural when I was concert master, Sheldon came to Spain, Barbara was there. So uh, uh, the EMF invited me the first time as an intern because at that time I was a student uh, but I of course I accepted because it was a wonderful opportunity and then I came back as a faculty when we first met each other uh, five years later and in total I went uh, three more summers there and then talking about what I do now with violin um, well I mostly teach, uh, from time to time I do some chamber concert, but I mostly teach, I'm, I'm a violin teacher in a conservatory in Madrid. I have students from uh, eight years old until 19, 20 years old. And in addition to that, in summer, I conduct four string orchestras in a summer camp that take place in the Pyrenees mountains but that are in the north, northern part of Spain, very close to the borderline with France. Mm -hmm. And I sing also in my group standards by Eta James and Frank Sinatra, for instance, like, I got you under my skin well but that's other story for oh, other interviews i've heard that that is really fun yeah. that is that's your hobby i guess one of many yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 
That's it's very nice. We have a lot of fun and it's very interesting to change. I mean, to get involved in music, but in other feel. And uh, yeah. I've actually been to Valencia before. So I know what you're talking about. It's, a, I was so impressed with how, how many people do music there. It's just like, a, a, almost like, I, I suppose it would be like the Spanish equivalent of growing up in Salzburg or something like that. Well, well, with some differences, of course, but uh, I, from the point of view of uh, social and historic uh, point of view, is quite peculiar because in my land, in Land Valencia, the music is associated always to the rural areas instead of urban areas. It's very, uh, very interesting how in every small village there are at least one music society with a small uh, theater and uh, with a brass band for instance in my in my village the brass band has about 150 members and uh, when i was a, a kid uh, i used to play in the chamber orchestra of the village and now my, my village has uh, grown a lot but at that time uh, my village had less than 3,000 uh, people. So, I mean, it's quite extraordinary uh, for a rural area that uh, that musical environment. And plus, something very interesting is that uh, in, in those villages, uh, the social center of the community is not the, the church. Of course, there's a Catholic uh, church and, and there's a lot of people who attend the church, but the core of social life is the music society. Hmm. And, and plus, it makes... Uh, very easy and very affordable to start to, to play some instrument because if you are a member uh, of the society, the society lends you uh, the, the instrument. So for instance, I, I bought my first violin when I played already five years. So everything is very intricate with social life, with family life, with, the, with normal life in a simple village. So uh, the access to classical music is very uh, graduate, graduate, would you say? Gradually, you, gradually, you, you yeah. would, very naturally, you get inside that, uh, that yeah. world, yeah. Amazing. That's, that goes a long way to explain why uh, I was always struck um, how many Spanish students were students in big American conservatories in the 1990s. Um, mm. I, there were um, my my housemate was in a, was a very a very socially uh, aware, very socially proactive person, and and I think I must have known every Hispanic person in Yale. It was um, amazing, but I think it was the same in in many other music schools around the country yeah. at the time. Yeah. Um, mm. So partly due to your incredible music culture, and partly probably due also to the extraordinary circumstances of the 1990s for your country. Of course, of course. Right, yeah. So um, I, think, I think one other thing I was really struck with uh, when I visited uh, Valencia is the incredible architecture of your city, yeah. of, of your yeah. neighboring city. And so you, you can't help but being inspired in the visual arts too. Um, of course. Just, uh, I, I think of the architect, of course, Calatrava, which is the, you know, the has most has built most of the contemporary monuments in, in Valencia, but yeah. maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the visual arts as well, because that's another side of you besides uh, being a nightclub singer, David. And yeah. uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I, I've been always, uh, I, I, I always thought about uh, shapes, volumes, colors, lines, and it doesn't matter if I'm observing a Gothic cathedral or a Baroque staircase or a contemporary uh, skyscraper, um, a car, a nice dress. And I'm always wondering why a, a given designer or architect, how can, how can them uh, integrate those ingredients in order to produce a nice space with the light that flows in the, if we are talking about a given building 
or how a simple object like a table or a da daily object that you can see down the streets like a car, how can a car go, can be so appealing, so attractive, or sometimes so disgusting. <laughs> uh, no, the ingredients, the shapes, the proportions, how you mix all of those things. So it's something that to me came very naturally. As you said, talking about Valencia, Valencia is a, is a city that has many different styles in the architecture. So it's very easy when you walk down the, the streets to, to appreciate or, or enjoy the view, of, uh, the view of a Gothic palace or a modernist building or a building by Calatrava, for instance, because Calatrava is native from Valencia. So again, as we were saying about the music, uh, for me, uh, was very natural, all that relationship with the visual world. Right now, I, I created my own fashion brand. Uh, street wear and casual wear is something that is for me very, I have a lot of fans and my, my, my friends are my best customers for the moment. And then um, I'm very interested about sculpture. I'm doing iron, iron sculptures. And this is something that lately has, uh, has, be, has been very rewarding for me. As a graphic designer, I, I, I do projects for mostly musical projects. Uh, I do logos, posters, uh, all sorts of advertisement. And something that is very rewarding for me is uh, that I'm doing the uh, visual communication of uh, the conservatory where I work in Madrid and uh, they give me all the freedom that I need to do whatever, whatever I want, which is something very exceptional from their creative point of view. Fantastic. You're, you're by no means the, the first uh, musician who's got a gift for, for uh, visual arts. I think of like Mendelssohn was a painter, Scherenberg was a painter, George Gershwin was a painter. Wow. It's very, it's very kind of you to, to compare me with them, but <laughs> in a very humble way, I, I have to say that I'm a little bit um, smaller or uh, not, with, not with that significance, but thank you anyway. <laughs> anyway, I can't imagine having both of those talents housed in the same body. C congratulations to you. So I guess maybe we should stop beating about ar around the bush. You have designed a new uh, logo for Second City Chamber Series. So in today's snapshot, one of the things that we're going to do is to unveil our new logo. Let's just have a look at it. Video as well is a, a, a production of David. So, bravo on both uh, on both uh, sides of creating a beautiful, Thank you very much. beautiful uh, uh, a presentation for it. Uh, tell us how you came up with uh, the ultimate uh, or the final product. Okay. So, well, first, thank you very much for that opportunity, and it's not a pleasantry. It's just that it really was a pleasure to work with you. And then uh, I'm going to, to talk a little bit how I started. Well, I started with the idea of uh, taking advantage of the first letter of each word, S, C, C, S. So in the beginning, I thought it could be very interesting to do some sort of, uh, to play as if you put a S, C, second city in front of a mirror. So if the mirror produces the opposite order. So I was uh, turning around that idea, but it never worked. I have to say, so I had to to start again from the from the fresh start. But somehow that idea of the S and C still was in my mind mm, moving around. So 
I started again and I took the, the most recognizable musical symbol, the treble clef, and I started to see how could I change or manipulate the, the shape of it, just taking some, some parts off and then turning it, turning it around. So when I did that, suddenly I realized that I could, by changing some parts of, some parts of the color, I found an, 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 an S and a C. So somehow I took again the idea that I had from the very beginning. So when I had that shape, uh, I thought the, the loneliness for that beautiful shape shape was too cruel for her <laughs> so um, uh, i took a replica of that shape and i started to move it a little bit and the first thing that i found it was some sort of uh, question mark that uh, it was funny because it was as if the question mark was asking me something but then i took again that, that uh, shape and I found out the head of a string instrument. So given that, uh, I'm sorry for the wind players or the piano players, but given that a uh, lot of masterpieces by chamber music was written for string instruments, I thought that it could, uh, some sign that remains, uh, reminds uh, the, a string instrument could add more meaning, more significance to the, to the logo. So I put it together and then once I, I, I've got the, the, the shape that I like, then comes the second half of it, that is uh, to find the uh, appropriate colors and the nice letterings that as you well know, it takes quite a long. But it's a process very interesting because you have to be uh, to take into account many aspects, the proportion, the size of the logo uh, in relationship with the letterings has to be the appropriate one because if not, uh, the logo has to work even though it's very small in a, for instance, in a business card or even if it's in the, in the backstage of a big stage, it has to work on paper or in a screen of a smartphone or, or a computer. And the colors has to be appealing, eye-catching, but they cannot be too dark or too bright. So it's a process that takes quite a long time, even when you have decided the, the logo in itself. But after long weeks of conversations uh, that you help a lot, you and the committee, um, I think we we found uh, something that is quite interesting. I say that in a very humble way, but um, well, I hope you like it. We love it. I think everyone on uh, on our our committee or everyone really on our board that's seen the new logo so far loves it. It was the, the first choice overwhelmingly by far. But as as you say, once we figured out the logo, we. Uh, uh, we had a long and protracted conversation around color and lettering and all of that. You were very patient with us, Debbie. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to you. Tell, tell us a little bit. I, I've already seen so many other uh, examples of your fine work, but for any of um, any of our listeners who might be interested in seeing some of your other work, David, where would they go? Thank you very much. Uh, I have a website. You can discover more of my visual work at uh, davidmarcovisual.com, davidmarcovisual.com, and that's all. And you can see pictures, photography, well, all the things that we have been talking about. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, David. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto. Hasta la pronto.